Good morning, Evangel. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah, the worship. So, so good. Yeah, we um, we uh, we love worshiping God mm -hmm. in our home, and um, as we continue today talking about uh, the the series, uh, home is the epicenter of the kingdom. I think worship is uh, is really part of what it means for God's kingdom to invade um, your home. Um, by the way, my name is Vadim. I'm one of the pastors uh, at, Evan at Evangel, and this is my beautiful wife, Mary. Hello. <laughs> so good to be on here today and just being with everyone. And we trust you're all out there as it's not quite the same as being in person, but um, we're just super excited to be worshiping together and just spending time together as a family. Yeah, and we're also excited to um, share some of the things that God has been teaching us um, lately, but also, I guess, throughout our lives, right? So we're talking about family, and family is not... I mean, we started our own family just recently. We've been married for five years? Mm -hmm. Five years, but we've been part of families for our entire lives. I mean, family is something that you are born into, and you remain part of for the rest of your life, really. I mean, you, uh, and then you create your own, and then you have kids, and your kids have families, and so it's kind of this uh, continuous line or lineage, you know? Yeah, yes, we have a family. <laughs> I mean, everyone has a family. <laughs> um, We're super profound here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's early morning, so. <laughs> Uh, but one of the things that we just wanted to just key in on, um, just how the family is so much like, you know, the heart and it starts there, um, you know, teaching, teaching your kids or like even yourself, you know, and if you're by yourself in this or with parents, you're walking uh, alongside that journey and there's always some context of family, even if you're not in um, um, if you're not married or you don't have kids, you have some sort of family and each of us comes from a family. And that's where Vadima is coming with this, right? <laughs> is that we all have families. Um, and the thing is that not all of our families operate as they should. Ideally, I mean, even the most ideal families have differences, clearly. Yes. Dysfunctions. Yeah, dysfunction. <laughs> differences and um i think that that's just uh, just some what we really wanted to talk about today is you know in this whole season even of being home and it's really like highlighted the family um and we've been talking about that how it's the epicenter of the kingdom the beginnings mm -hmm. and you know it all comes out from there but what if your family is not healthy and that's just something we we want to go there today yeah yeah, we want to talk about dysfunctions and, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> not dysfunctions necessarily, differences. I think it's, uh, it's a better word, right? Both and. <laughs> Both and, yeah. I mean, dysfunction. What does dysfunction mean to you? <laughs> well, if you think of, it if you think of your uh, Greek roots here. <laughs> <laughs> Greek roots. Okay, I, I have nothing to do with uh, Greek lineage or family. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Greek words? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, when I think of words, uh, I kind of break them down uh, into little little words. And so dysfunction is really two words to me. It's dis and function. And dis means the opposite of function. So it's kind of when something is not functioning properly or something is broken, mm -hmm. that's kind of what dysfunction is. And there is, it's not, I mean, we can take it negatively, but mm -hmm. we can also look at it positively. When something is not working properly, it means there is room for improvement and something can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of our focus today. Yeah. We're talking about dysfunctions. When something is not working as, as you want it to, in the family and uh, striving towards function, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and so whether that's like your your parents, like if you're younger, or um, your kids, your spouse, or not, or maybe 
you know, you're separated, whatever that is. There's so many different differences um, in that. And, you know, maybe you're in this place where you're like wanting to really walk after Jesus and you're like, I'm in, you know, I'm totally in. And then it's like you're constantly like just coming up against um, opposition, opposition. Yeah. Within your own family. And you're like, how is my home supposed to be the epicenter of the kingdom Mm. when we're not even, you know, on the same page here? And um, and I think today we want to talk in a few ways, but about we're talking specifically about the nuclear family. And so like the demon I and our daughter. You I know. love mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then your cup? I have a cup too. It says yeah, it matches. But anyways. Um so Yeah, we wanna talk about the nuclear family. Yes. And then going out from there, like your extended family, right? Mm-hmm. Um your so, yeah, your in laws. We're gonna talk about that it's a today. Big part of the family. And then, you know, friends, church family, how that extends out because it's mm-hmm. not just us. We are not the end all be mm. all in this. And yeah. so, um, yeah, so we're gonna just start talking a little bit about, you know, those differences within families and this is nothing new. It's been here since basically the creation of the world. Literally. Right? <laughs> Literally. So <laughs> Yes. And I guess, you know, um, we can we can go through multiple, numerous stories of, of families in the Bible. And uh, actually, if you read if every story, really, that you read in the Bible, you find in the Bible, it's a story of a family. And uh, so if we begin with Adam and Eve, you already start noticing some dysfunction there in that family, right? Um, yeah, this like first family that God places on the earth and then their two sons, the one, you know, kills the other one. Like that's yeah. fairly dysfunctional, I would say. Yeah. Um, and that's like the our roots. That's how we started, right? And yeah. then going into like um, Abraham, right? Mm-hmm. And his relationship with his nephew even yeah. i mean there's other stories about abraham but this is the you know the guy that god is talking to repeatedly throughout the old testament mm-hmm. is through him his offspring are you know yeah. gonna, gonna bless the world and yet he has a disagreement with his nephew yeah about a lot. what about what Land. <laughs> land. Have you so. ever had a disagreement about land? <laughs> with your uncle. <laughs> with your family. It's yeah. not all that uncommon. And um, it's it's in the Bible. It's a story that of something that happened. Yeah. Um, now what's interesting is that the Bible doesn't hide these, these you know, uh, secrets. You know, there is dysfunction in the family and the Bible will point it out. And uh, I think for a reason, for us to learn something. And so we can keep going through, you know, stories. And uh, we we come across uh, a family of Jacob, who was the descendant of Abraham. I don't know, the great, great... Grand- grandson. Grandson. Oh, yeah, grandson. Um, and uh, even there, you know, w- we also find dysfunction. And especially, mm-hmm. uh, in particular, in his relationship with the, with his father-in-law, actually his future father-in-law at that time, but uh, um, the one that he worked for so that he can marry his daughter. Um, Yet on the wedding day, on the wedding night, his father-in-law gives him the wrong (laughs) bride. Her sister, yeah. Her sister. I mean, how... (laughs) And then says, if you want the actual one, you need to work seven more years, you know, 14 years working. Like, if you think you have problems with your (laughs) in-laws, there have been problems since the beginning of time, you know, like, um, and I think there, these stories continue. And, and the point is that, that, um, well, what are some other stories maybe? Well, I mean, there's, there's a couple inappropriate ones we should probably kind of I mean we can mention them uh I remember Judah Judah and his uh um Tamar Tamar which was was related she was related Married right? to his son yes and his son and died and and so seduced him and yeah ended up having his children that's the line of Jesus yes right? yes Judah. Judah the line of Judah wow 
so that's yeah so jesus was comes a dis- into <laughs> comes from a dysfunctional family so to speak <laughs> um yeah we can go we can go for for a long time and uh but the point that we're trying to make is that dysfunction is normal quote unquote in the bible in that you find it in every family it's mm-hmm. it's just you know part of who we are uh, mm-hmm. as a result of sin um however what the bible tells us is that the bible looks beyond families into the time when jesus will redeem the families and jesus will restore and renew them and that promise was actually given to adam and eve beginning with adam and eve when god promised that the seed or the offspring or the child will will bring restoration uh into into the family and so these promises kept going through uh, throughout the history of the bible um and abraham in particular was promised and i'll get back to that passage but he was promised that in him all the families of the earth will be blessed actually i'm going to read this this uh this little scripture it says uh, it's, it's in it's found in genesis chapter 12 verse 3 yeah Actually, I'll start with with uh, verse t- two. Uh, God says to to Abraham, "And I will make you of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed." That's a cool promise, and and uh, that promise was fulfilled in Jesus, and so that's kind of. What we're trying to to point out the dysfunctions you'll find them they will be there mm-hmm. you probably have them <laughs> we have them yeah. um and differences and dysfunctions but the bible always points uh, beyond the immediate family uh, and looks at the bigger larger family of god mm-hmm. and, in, and in jesus and how in jesus all the families uh get renewed and restored so mm-hmm. What you know, one story we forgot to mention, and I one? <laughs> that, well, one. there's many stories, but just one that came to mind was uh, the story of David, King David, who was like yes. a significant um, character in the Old Testament, and a lot of the Psalms or the songs were written by him. He was, you know, a musician and um, a king. Um, all of these things, and he was always referred to, you know, as a man after God's own heart. Yeah. And it's such a, like, an interesting thing because it's like, we would want to strive to be like David, and then you see the story of his life unfold, and he made mistakes. Like, he took another man's wife, right? And mm-hmm. he um, threw out like his kids even into his kids right there was so much like animosity between his kids and um i'm sure he was like looking at that and being like what in the world happened like you know i'm here like you know trying to pursue after god but i think the the even that key thing and that we want to bring that forward is that david would he made mistakes but he would repent right Mm. and he would turn from turn from those things he recognized that and said like i'm wrong in this i need to be going the opposite way right and walking Mm. in obedience to god again and i just think that's like so important in this journey of even though there's all this stuff happening is there is hope Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. there's hope through jesus and there's hope that that um even if your family is super not in a good place or and there's nothing you can do about it maybe sometimes you can do something about it Mm -hmm. and i think that's important to note is do you need to be walking in obedience to jesus Mm -hmm. um but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it and the same thing applies you walk in obedience to jesus and it's up to him to also be walking in that yes so and even um within our marriage right Mm -hmm. we are learning that constantly and um how to walk together yeah and be different yeah and and, well be different but also (laughs) see past differences and see past the dysfunctions and i mean uh 
we can tell our stories, you know, like the, mm-hmm. the families that we came from. We were born into family. Um, you were born into a family of missionaries from the States, living in Canada. I was born into a family, uh, uh, two parents living in Ukraine. Uh, my father was a, was a, a, a military um, personnel, um, heavy duty mechanic. And uh, my mother was uh, a housewife. And so yet um, the, the differences that we experienced growing up are when, once we started talking about them and noticing how it shaped us and influenced us as we came together and, and created a new family were astonishing. And, um, and so I grew up in, uh, in a family where um, m- only my mom uh, was, a, was a Christian. She was a believer and she was the one who brought me to the Lord uh, ever since I was, ever since I remember really myself. So five years old. Um, I remember myself being at the church, grew, growing up at the church, and so the church really kind of became my family in, in a way. Why? Because my dad wasn't a Christian, uh, even though he wasn't against it. He saw it as a good thing, as a beneficial thing, because I wasn't drinking, I wasn't smoking, I wasn't a drug addict. Um, it sort of um, it helped me to, you know be a good person. So he wasn't against it. Um, however, in my home, um, there was no, um, there's no, you know, this Christian upbringing. There's no growing in faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it felt like I was on our own, uh, by myself, on my own, kind of trying to cling to the Lord, trying to read my Bible, even though my mom helped me through it immensely. But not seeing it um, play out between my parents really impacted me in the way I saw a family, right? And so, how 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 was your upbringing? How was how was it different? I know it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you tell. No, yeah, and I think that's like where we we grew up very differently, right? And um, my family I came from a really strong uh, Christian family, and who weren't just like saying they were Christians, but it was practiced and implemented in everyday life. And just like we lived and breathed and walked in that, right? And um, my parents were just really striving, I'd say to like, to walk after Jesus and to bring their kids up in that way. Um, And so, yeah, I think for me, like I had such a strong um, immediate family that 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 was my church in a sense as well like i mean we also were part of a broader um church but i don't think it was like maybe not to say it wasn't as as important to me as for you Mm -hmm. but it was different because i had my parents like constantly both of them inputting into my life and they were coming together Mm -hmm. and they were trying to work together and i mean of course they weren't perfect either, um, but even perfect families. Yeah, even perfect families. <laughs> there's things for sure, but I think that stability, mm-hmm. you know, in in my family, um, just even in parenting, in discipline, and all of that, we just knew like if we asked mom, it was going to be the same with dad, unless it was like ice cream, but <laughs> um, mostly, you know, like though they were like united on that front and for me I grew up in that it was just normal and I think that that flows into a lot of how my relationship with God played out um but it was very centered around our immediate family for sure like so for you home was really the epicenter of the kingdom Mm -hmm. yeah whereas for me I had to look beyond my family I had to look for this epicenter in the in the well, I would say in the church, in my larger family, and I did find it there. Um, of course, just like any other family, the church family is not a perfect family, and there is differences and disagreements and dysfunctions. Yet, I found in the in the in the body of believers in the church, I found that um, this strong connection uh, in in 
in faith and, and, and just abiding in Jesus. And so they were, they were pushing me towards, towards God and, um, and growing in character, whereas I didn't see that in my home um, because of the disagreements that my parents had um, in terms of their faith. Mm -hmm. And so then we're like here trying to come together, establishing our own family. Mm -hmm. um, we have some cultural differences, but Honestly. I would, yeah, <laughs> I would say that... I am Ukrainian. I was born in Czech Republic. I'm not Czech. Uh, I grew up in Ukraine and both of my parents are Ukrainian. So if you don't know my background, that's kind of, you probably notice uh, my accent, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm Ukrainian, yes. And you are Canadian uh, and American. Yeah, American. <laughs> that tells everything. American. <laughs> American. Oh. I don't know what you call that. Yeah, I think but, you just coined the word. Yeah, it's kind of more similar, probably, than Ukrainian and Canadian. But at the same time, I don't think that has played. There are, of course, those things in different cultures, but I don't think that has played as much a role as. Um, just some of the like daily structure things right like even for me growing up I grew up in like once again like that structure and like family devotions was like a priority praying together all of those and that that was not right like meals we had meals together you know all of that and so then when we're trying to melt and you didn't come from that kind of background yes I did not have that kind of experience in my family. There was, we did not have devotions as a family. Um, I did have them on my own, um, but there was nothing like, you know, when I uh, came into your family and became part of your family, extended family, um, I, you know, coming into your home and seeing your dad, my father-in-law um, now, you know, every single morning, and I'm sure you heard of this from Jimmy last last uh, Sunday, he, he said that every single morning they would do devotions. And that's what I started uh, noticing, that for them, that was an important part of their family. That's how they did things. And I like that. To, I've never experienced that on my own, but I love that. And I was welcomed into this epicenter of the, the kingdom when, when, you know, when father um, reads the word to his children and they they meditate on it they grow together to me that was powerful and so as I was welcomed into that um, part of the family I, I I started thinking well I think our my family should have the same and uh, not having that as a you know a habit in my family in Ukraine I had to work hard on it uh, even though I saw it as important, I had to, I mean... We're still. We're still, yes. Working hard on we're it. We're working yeah. hard. It's not a habit. It wasn't part of my life. And uh, I think it's more for you. It's easier for you, and you see it better. But uh, I, when you, you know, you pointed out, you know, we didn't have family devotions in the morning, I would be like, well, we, you know, we didn't have time. Or I would find an excuse oftentimes. Um... And, uh, and I think just not letting that, seeing value in it and not letting that go and work, keep working on it, just like Jimmy and Tiana uh, last Sunday were talking about the liturgies, it really became our liturgy mm -hmm. and practice that we're still working hard on. Mm -hmm. But merging and blending mm -hmm. the two families is not I, easy yet. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, just like it it's difficult too, right? Because it depends on work. It's hard to do mm -hmm. that in the morning. And, and it's not just about having devotions as a family. I, I wouldn't, I would want to say that as well. That's yes. not the end all be all is in raising your kids well. But I think for us, it's this time of like gathering together and, um, yeah, praying, talking about scripture, mm -hmm. um, just like in Deuteronomy talking about like, you know, putting it on like, your forehead right yes. just like in front of you and we want that for our family we want to be just like walking into our day saying like okay god you know what do you have for us and i know we're not always in the mood for it and we don't always feel like it but i think it really sets that yeah. um and maybe it's in the evening maybe that's what works but i think it's just important to have a focus on that and um yeah. a focus on 
training your kids or within your home if you're um, a couple or a single like it doesn't matter it's just a, a time of like redirecting focusing back to God and um, I think that all of this is just so important oh you had just um, that triggered a thought in me you were talking about being welcomed in mm -hmm. like to my family and I think from my background coming from like a really solid family one of the pitfalls can be that um it's easy to be comfortable mm. right it's like it's really easy because i love my family you know my brothers are like my best friends now they're wives their kids um my parents like um it's easy to just become all about our family yeah my family our family um, and we do everything together we get together for this and that and the next thing and there's totally nothing wrong with that and I think it's very healthy in a family and yet at the same time that is not the end all be all and I feel like this story is so much bigger than us and our family and how secure we feel in that and mm -hmm. I I know for myself, I've had to like push against that and be like, no, we're bringing others into the family. Not, I mean, not that it was a struggle for me to bring the demon, mm. but, um, <laughs> you know, like sometimes you just get so comfortable in your zone mm. and everybody, you know, we get along pretty well. And if we have disagreements, we're like, we're, people are intentional about working things out. And then for us to go beyond that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and just be like, what's the next step? It's not just yeah. like with Abraham. It wasn't just that he was going to be a blessing through his descendants mm -hmm. and then to all the families of the world, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, for me, you know, it's kind of the same coming, being welcomed into a, a family that is healthy. Um, it was not easy to accept that, even though it's it's all positive, it's all good. It, you know it's healthy. You know that it's gonna, you know, be so good for you, so beneficial. Yet, because you haven't experienced it, you kind of shut down a little bit, and 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 you you're you're very suspicious and and don't want to accept it, or maybe your your pride doesn't allow you to. Um, and some I think sometimes even you know the pride was kind of in the way of. You know, I need this for my family, yet the pride didn't allow me to kind of, okay, let's do it together, whatever it takes. And you know, every family is so different. The dynamics of the family is so different. Fathers have different jobs. It might be, you know, a job nine to five. Some of you start really early. Some of you start at six, five, four in the morning. And so not seeing your kids, your family in the morning, not being able to have devotions, that will, you know, that will affect you if you don't do anything about it. It can become this dysfunction. But I don't think, you know, there's no, there's no one right way of doing it. I mean, you can have devotions in the morning. That's not the point. You can have them in the evening, whatever works. The point is to have that... Um, time where, where when you are investing in your family, and whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, right? So what? So what happens after investing in the family? <laughs> the next step. <laughs> what is the next step? <laughs> because I think we've had this conversation. You know, sometimes we can get too focused yes. on the family yeah. and um there is focus on the family <laughs> now i feel like i'm talking about focus on the family <laughs> which is a really good organization but yeah. um there is so important the focus on the family but from out of there has to flow more mm -hmm. and into the lives of others and into the church family um into the lives of your neighbors into the lives of those that you know, you're in interaction mm -hmm. with and into all the world. Like, yeah. wouldn't that be amazing if we are functioning out of healthy families, mm. functioning into our church, and then flowing out 
you know, into our schools, yeah. into our neighborhoods, yeah. into neighboring communities and cities and countries, right? Uh -huh. Like even just the impact of what health in the family and health, don't discount that, health in you, if you're the mm. only one in your family that wants that and is desiring to walk um, after Jesus, don't discount that because yeah. you don't know what that's going to do within your family. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think, I think it's, it's you, what you're saying is so, so uh, right. Even uh, thinking back to... Did you say I'm right? Yeah, I think I did. Wow. <laughs> I love Mama. <laughs> um, I shouldn't be so surprised. <laughs> you're always right. Um, but, yes, you're right. Even going back to, um, to, to the promise that was given to Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. To be the blessing not only to his family. I think that's where it all starts. It starts... Uh, the epicenter of the kingdom is in your family. But the promise to Abraham was that you will be the blessing to others. In, mm -hmm. in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And in you, meaning in his children, and if you trace his genealogy, the genealogy of Abraham, you will come to Jesus, which is what happened. The promise uh, was fulfilled in Jesus. And in Jesus now, all the families can be blessed. And now as we live in this, um, in, in light of this promise, the fulfilled promise, we can be blessing to others. We look beyond our family. We still focus on our family, but sometimes too much focus on your family can be detrimental. Mm -hmm. if, if everything you do, if everything you invest is your family. Yeah, what if that doesn't turn out? It, exactly. Like if, you're, if your kids... Are, you know you're investing all of this into your kids and then um, having this perfect family and doing all the right things and having devotions and having this mm -hmm. and having that and your kids don't walk after Jesus what then because it's like everyone has their own choices even within that and of course we can look back and look at our mistakes we're not there in our parenting mm -hmm. uh, we're in the early stages but I know that we don't have control over where our kids are going to go. We don't have control over our spouse or our parents or, you know, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have control over the guy that sits across from us in church. Well, mm. not right now. Unless it's your husband. <laughs> no. Um, Shouldn't control him. But... You know, yeah, like we we think if we do all the perfect things then, but mm -hmm. other people do have choices within that, and that yeah. that um, comes in right to play with. Yeah, yeah, and uh, my mom, you know, bringing up me and my two two my two of my sisters by herself in terms of faith, she did an amazing job, even in the middle of dysfunction, as mm -hmm. I as I look at it now. You know, uh, even in the middle of the disagreements and, 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 and tension that she had with her husband in terms of belief and faith, yet she did an amazing job. And I owe my, you know, uh, my walk with Jesus to her in some ways because she did all she could, all her, she gave um, every she, everything she had so that I can experience life. Mm -hmm. And so even in that dysfunction, God can redeem and bring grace. Mm -hmm. And looking at your family and thinking mm -hmm. of your family, the healthy family that was focused on, um, on itself, yet looked beyond. Mm -hmm. And I know that your family, they always have their door open to people. Oh, yeah. People are just popping by filter in in the spare I, room you <laughs> never know who's there <laughs> yeah they're a blessing to others they always look beyond without neglecting mm -hmm. their nuclear family mm -hmm. and i think that's the key yeah i mean if you just think of the um analogy of like if your home or the, all the homes around you are going up in flames like you are going to get out with your family right you're going to take everybody in your house with you and then you're going to go back and check on your neighbor, too. Like, you're not going to just leave them there. But it would just be ridiculous to think that I'm going to run over to my neighbor, 
get them all out and then I'm gonna come back and wake up my kids mm -hmm. while your house is on fire, right? Like yeah. you you have this like obligation mm -hmm. to the family. Yes. And I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. And then you have this obligation outside of the family. Yeah. Um, what do you do on the plane when uh, they tell you when the, the air pressure drops in the cabin, uh, the masks fall, what is the first thing you do? Put your mask on. Put your mask on. That's right. You yeah. are taking care of yourself. And that's, that's, that you need that in order to help other. And then they say, after you put the mask on, then you can help your, your neighbor mm -hmm. to put his mask on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think um, we wanted to bring it back to that. If there's two things that you remember, is that we are here to be a blessing. Um, no. That's not where we should start. Well, you, I mean, we you, are you're here right. to be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I think but, this is an overarching thing. Yeah, we're we are here, here to... to be a blessing. But number one is that you need to allow yourself to be welcomed in, mm -hmm. to be blessed. And, you know, you might be sitting on the fringes and just um, saying like, oh, I could never do anything or I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I just want to encourage you to allow yourself to be blessed by others. Don't just sit there, like come in with extended hands and be like, here, give me the blessing, you know, um, be brave, like choose to step out. If that means confessing sin, dealing with stuff, addictions, like, um, anything that is hindering you and holding you back but sometimes maybe it's even just entering in and joining a small group or joining a another family calling them up and being brave mm -hmm. allow yourself to be blessed but you can't just sit at home and be like you know i don't know i can't yeah. i can't yeah. you know but allow yourself mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's something that we're learning constantly mm -hmm. as, as we're building our family because, uh, you know, from my perspective, what I have to work hard on is to allow myself to be blessed mm -hmm. by your family, your side of the family, by all the positive things that they brought into your mm -hmm. life. And uh, what the challenge, however, is that I have so much baggage that is not necessarily positive that I need to work hard to let go, sometimes repent. I need to, um, I need to take these steps of obedience, uh, humbling myself and, uh, and, and allowing myself to be welcomed. Uh, I think that's, uh, it's a continual, continuous, uh, struggle for me, but I want to experience the blessing. And so, um, not only because I want to experience the blessing, but I want my family to experience mm -hmm. the blessing and beyond my family, my nuclear family. I want, I want my neighbors to experience what I experience. I want the families that I know also have what we have, mm -hmm. uh, the renewed, restored life in Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for you, I think the second part, I mean, we're talking about two sides of the same coin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm is to choose to welcome others, right? Yeah. So the, the first one is to allow yourself to be welcomed and then choose to welcome others. I think that we have to go beyond ourselves and I think it can be, it can actually be sin to not. I just wanna say that on my part, you know, like being blessed with this like solid upbringing and, and just feeling like our family is like secure, even though you have to work for it and you have to do things like um, to be a blessing. And if you are not, I think that you can be walking in disobedience to God to you so don't just think like you know what we've got our family we're getting this together like for me i constantly am having to go back to that and like putting you know stripping off the pride that holds me back from just saying like we need others mm -hmm. we're just we're not an island to ourselves like we we need to go out from here and um be a blessing so yeah and i think 
it's uh, it's a huge privilege to be part of the fulfillment of this this uh, promise that God gave to Abraham a long time ago. He spoke uh, function into his dysfunction, mm -hmm. and he said that in you and through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And so as we, you know, uh, grow and build our families, I think this is an important piece of the puzzle of what it means for home to be the, the, the epicenter of God's kingdom. Because what is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is not your family. God's kingdom is so much bigger. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, it envelopes the entire world, heaven and earth, the, the past and the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that kingdom is in your home, that, that automatically allows it to spill out and, and over mm -hmm. abundantly onto others. And that is, I think, the key, is to have that mindset for us as the church family, for us as, as individual families, mm -hmm. to have the mindset of we are here not just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're here to glorify yeah. God and to build our families in such a way that we can be a blessing to our kids, our children, mm -hmm. but more so so that they can be a blessing to others and to others and to others mm -hmm. to, into uh, the future and mm -hmm. all the generations. And that's how God's name uh, will be glorified. That's how all the families of the earth will be blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you that's have anything good. to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we said a lot. Yeah. No, I think that... Um, we we are actually were really um, influenced by a book that we read mm -hmm. before we got married. Yes. It was actually a marriage book by Francis and Lisa Chan, um, and w it was just really encouraging in this being missional in your marriage, you know, and going out and going beyond. And I feel like that just kind of tweaked something in our brains, being like, yeah, like this is mm -hmm. so much more, and. Um, it's an awesome book if you ever want to do yeah. What's the uh, title? Do you marriage remember? book together. You and forever together. You and me forever. Together forever. <laughs> we will post. Google it. <laughs> we will post the yeah, title. Yeah, but it's um yeah, but I just think that this um just going beyond and be a blessing and it's not just this like, I bless you. Mm -hmm. You can do that too, um, but I think there might be a lot more blessing and just really practically applying and, mm. you know, asking Jesus. It's so important just to um, be listening and say, how can I be a blessing? Like mm -hmm. today, how can I be a blessing to my family? How can I be mm. a blessing outside my family? And then, especially if you're the kind of person that is the doer and wants to get things done and do things and serve others allow yourself to be blessed you have to allow yeah. yourself to be blessed that's part of the blessing is that you get to be blessed and then you bless others and then you benefit it's like it's amazing but when one side of that equation is out of whack it, it just uh it's disbalanced dysfunction it's just an increased dysfunction yeah yeah so. yeah and for us uh as evangel i think um, just knowing who we are, our DNA is to be the church in the city mm -hmm. and for the city. We already assume mm -hmm. that we are the blessing to others and that's what we're, we want to be. And so for us, this is an opportunity to respond in obedience, to start focusing on your families so that you can be also blessing to others. And, um, you know, uh, the, especially in this time of COVID-19, when we're forced to be together, mm -hmm. um, so many good things can come out of it. So many bad things or negative things, mm -hmm. dysfunctions can come out of it mm -hmm. uh, because we, we never noticed them there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we can take this time and really pay attention, really pay attention to the things that God is teaching us through this time and take it as this special time when we can be actually uh, working on and experiencing God's kingdom in our home, mm -hmm. that, you know, requires work on our part, a lot of work, a lot of humility. Forgiveness. <laughs> Forgiveness. 
Yeah, I think I think forgiveness is a is a key. Mm -hmm. It's a key um, to overcoming dysfunction. Whether you are trying to you know allow yourself to be welcomed, mm -hmm. or you are choosing to welcome others, forgiveness is 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 key. Forgiveness is what Jesus da did. Um, mm -hmm. He forgave us, and and that forgiveness allowed us to experience the blessing. Uh, of God's family and so we should be forgiving to others as well and inclusive um, we should be um, adopting others mm -hmm. you know we should be I mean I th I know that a lot of you um, part that are part of evangel you've you've made that decision you either f adopted a, someone who didn't have a family or you became a foster parents and that's part of what it means to be a blessing to others that is very practical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's really it that's what we wanted to share um, if you remember one thing from our conversation I think it's mm -hmm. it's this two-sided coin um, of, of focusing looking beyond your family is to allowing yourself to be welcomed uh, to be blessed and and also choosing mm -hmm. choosing um, to welcome others mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna close in prayer and uh, let's uh, let's allow Jesus to speak to our hearts uh, on what we've heard and mm -hmm. so that the word that he spoke to you uh, would be clear in your mind in your heart mm -hmm. and that you would take that word grab it you keep it, put it in your heart, and then you do it so that so that what Jesus told you would be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, um, as we think of the home, as we think of home as your kingdom, as the epicenter of your kingdom, I pray that you would give us this mindset of that looks beyond of our uh, beyond of who we are as a family as the nuclear family but also looks towards our neighbors our friends our co-workers mm -hmm. and as well as our church family and uh, I pray that the things that you were, were was speaking to us the things that you were re revealing to us that they would be so clearly imprinted mm -hmm. on our hearts that we would not be able to get away from it but so that you, your spirit would push us towards action. And I pray that, that your spirit uh, would speak to each and every one of us right now through this live stream, wherever you are, whether you're a family or you are a single person and who, who's thinking about starting a family or who is doubting that I will ever, will I ever be, have a family? I pray that you, you, Jesus, would speak into those situations and, and expand our thinking, uh, allow us to see beyond ourselves in that time. And so to see others around us mm -hmm. and allow ourselves to be welcomed mm -hmm. if we're alone uh, and be blessed by others who experienced life yeah. and blessing. And also if we experience the blessing uh, that, that you gave us, Jesus, that we would also choose to welcome others and share the blessing so that your promise that you gave to Abraham, that the, all the families of the earth mm -hmm. will be blessed and will be fulfilled even more and more and more. Mm -hmm. so Jesus, we thank you for, for your faithfulness. We thank you that in you, we have such an amazing family, such, a, such an amazing blessing. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be, to be part of your family. Mm -hmm. Well, amen. Amen. The Evangel yeah. family, uh, it is an amazing uh, experience and privilege to be part of mm -hmm. your family, <laughs> uh, part of you, and we experience uh, uh, we experienced a lot of blessing just being part of this church, mm -hmm. and we hope that that you also uh, experience the same. Yeah. So from our home to yours, uh, have a great Sunday.